guys, Dan Moran here from Concierge Diamonds. People ask me all the time, what are some crazy stories you have from your years in the business? I've been doing this for about 20 years now, and you best believe I have some doozies. I'll tell you one now and buckle up because it's, it's a little bit long, but this story is bananas. So, gosh, 15 plus years ago, I was working for somebody else at the time and uh, got a call from a wholesale client who was looking for a pretty expensive stone. It was about an $85,000 stone. We'd never worked with this guy before. He was out of Louisiana. And so uh, we called around for his references and they said, no, he's a good guy. He's an honest guy. You can go ahead and give him the stone. So we did. A few weeks go by, we're having trouble getting the guy on the phone. We get a little nervous. We start calling around and uh, come to find out maybe he wasn't as good a guy as we thought he was. So my boss at the time got pretty nervous about it and said, Dan, get out there, get my money. I don't care what you gotta do, figure it out. That conversation happened at about 4.15 on the, in the afternoon. By 4.20, I was in my car heading to the airport. By six o'clock, I was on a flight. Made it to Louisiana the next morning, landed in this small town. The airport was the size of your closet. It was crazy. Went to the local car rental company. They only had one car available. It was an orange Camaro. So I got in the General Lee and uh, drove into town. Uh, by the way, on my way into this uh, little hamlet, I passed, I swear to God, I can't make this up. Billy Bob's Bank and Tooth Extraction. That was real. And I passed it on my way into town. Now, this little town was a one stoplight kind of a town. The tallest building in town was five stories tall. The bottom floor was a Chase Bank. The top floor was my client's office. I park my car and I go inside. I knock on the door, the receptionist lets me in. Hey, hi, we're not expecting you, who's this? And I said, hi, my name is Dan, I'm here from So-and-So Diamonds, I'm looking for this gentleman. We, well, we weren't expecting you. I said, I know you weren't expecting me. Nonetheless, here I am and I'd like to talk with him, please. To my surprise, the guy comes out. We start talking and I said, listen, uh, I've had a lot of trouble getting you on the phone. He says, yeah, you know, I'm sorry about that. I said, that's okay. I'd like my money, please. Well, I don't exactly have it. Hmm. That's all right too. I'll tell you what, just give me back my diamond and we'll call it even and stay friends. Well, I don't exactly have that either. Now we've got a problem. So I said to him, well, how do you suggest we handle it? You owe me $85,000. And he said, well, I could, I could maybe get you a cashier's check for 10,000. I said, okay. So we run downstairs and he gets me a cashier's check from the bank for $10,000. And in my mind, I'm going, keep this guy distracted. Don't let him start thinking about what his options are because he's gonna, he's gonna create some, some trouble for me and I can't have it. So I stay with him and I think he's thinking I'll take my 10K and go home. But instead I come back upstairs with him and say, okay, now you owe me $75,000. How are we gonna handle that? Uh, well, I could maybe write you post-dated checks for three or $4,000 a week. And I said, all right, we can do that but I'm gonna take some of your merchandise to hold as collateral with me until your money comes through. Oh, okay. So he opens up his safe and he starts taking out little rings and trinkets and handing them to me. And in my mind, I'm assessing, I'm going, okay, this is 2,000 bucks, this is 5,000 bucks, this is 3,000 bucks. And it comes out to, you know, 30 or $40,000. But I noticed that the whole time he's going through his safe, there's one box that he's kind of strategically pushing out of the way whenever he's looking for stuff to give me. So I said to him, hey, what's in that box? He opens it up, it's a five carat diamond. I'm guessing it's worth about 50K. I said, that'll work, thank you. I stuff everything in my pocket and I'm out the door. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking, he's gonna regret doing this pretty fast. And, you know, I'm in rural Louisiana and for all I know, the sheriff is this guy's cousin. So I, get, I gotta get out of Dodge. So I, I hustle myself back to the airport and there's quite a brouhaha with that too, but I managed to make it back to LA. Okay, so he owes me $75,000. My boss is very happy that I've got these post-dated checks and this collateral to hold until it clears. We deposit the first check a week later, it clears, no problem. We deposit the second check, it clears, no problem. Uh, then he calls me and he says, hey, I need my five carat diamond back. And I said, well, we made a deal here. You know, um, I'm supposed to hold this as collateral until your check's all clear. He said, yeah, but how can I pay you back if I can't sell my inventory? And I said, that's a fair point. That's a real problem, but that's not my problem, it's yours. Well, but I already sold the stone. 
I don't know what to tell you, man. But I already got paid for it. Paid, you say? Why don't you send me that money and I'll ship the stone anywhere you want in the world? So we did. He sent me, I think it was $40,000. And we shipped the stone to a store in, I want to say, Minnesota on his behalf. So now he still owes us about twenty-five or 30000 And we're thinking we're in good shape. The next week, his $4,000 check bounces. The week after that, his $4,000 check bounces. Uh-oh, we got a problem. And then, to my surprise, the five-carat diamond shows up in the mail. The store in Minnesota shipped it back. I guess when they received it, they, it turned out they didn't like it as much as they thought they would. So they returned it. And they naturally returned it to wherever it was shipped to them from, which was me. I don't say anything. I just take the stone, stick it in my safe, and I'm feeling pretty safe again, feeling pretty good. A few days later, I get a call from the guy in, Minis in, uh, in Louisiana. Hey, did my stone come back to you? Turns out, yes, it did. Well, you gotta give me that, that money back that I wired you. No, you owe me that money. In fact, you still owe me about twenty-five or $30,000. But I have to repay the guy. Listen, man, first you have to repay me. You've owed me this money for months now. This isn't okay. So sort yourself out. And he starts yelling and screaming, you can't do this to me, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, I'm not the one who changed the terms of our deal, like you are. So here's what I think. As of today, you owe me whatever it was, $28,000. You send me that money, I'll send you back all your stuff and we can forget we ever met. And that's what he did. He wired me the balance. I shipped him all this stuff right away. He had it the next day. And that was that as far as I was concerned. Come to find out a few months later, the company went bankrupt. They owed people millions. And we were the only ones who got our money out. Why? Because I was the only one crazy enough to get on an airplane, fly to Louisiana, knock on his door, and, and sit there until he paid me. These are the things you gotta go through to learn your lessons in the diamond business, guys. I've been here for a long time, I've seen some stuff. I got a million other stories like that. Anytime you wanna hear one, let me know.